Hi everyone and welcome to episode 21 of the Angular Spring Boot course. In the previous episode, we saw how we can use the Angular built-in pipes to transform input into a desired output. And today we are going to take that concept one step further and we are going to implement our own custom pipe. Now, what, are, what is a custom pipe? Well, a custom pipe is a pipe but it's a pipe that we write for ourselves. So the Angular team was kind enough to provide us with some built-in pipes like, you know, uppercase currency, percentage, etc., etc. But there are, there are situations where um, we need to perform a custom transformation of data. And of course, they can't think of all the possible use cases. So they let us the possibility to easily implement pipes for ourselves. And of course, you know, custom pipes are reusable pieces of functionality. You can create one pipe and then reuse it in multiple templates. And custom pipes also play nice with built-in pipes. This means that we can chain uh, standard Angular pipes with our pipes, you know, in the same uh, in the same uh, structure, in the same way as we did with normal ones. So we don't lose any of the functionality of the built-in ones but we have to actually provide an implementation and this is how a custom pipe would look like now as you can see it's pretty straightforward i think we have something like six seven lines of code now let's break this code piece by piece and try to understand how we can build our own pipe now the first thing that you have to notice is the add pipe annotation and the add pipe annotation is uh, something that you put on top of a class that will implement the pipe logic and as you can see this pipe annotation has one um, you know one uh, argument called name and this is the name of the pipe that we will use in our templates so if you want to apply this exponential strength pipe uh, which by the way is taken from the angular examples I uh, know we just you know write our input pipe operator and then exponential strength. So the name of the pipe that is going to be used in the templates is declared here in the add pipe annotation. Next, uh, it's not sufficient to just write a standard class. We also need to implement the pipe transform interface. And the pipe transform interface has one method called transform. And transform, you know, takes uh, has a mandatory parameter, a mandatory argument, you know, the value. So is the value that we pass into the pipe, it's our input. And then we can pass in um, more, you know, parameters for the pipe. So for example, in this case, the input is the number. So we want to transform the number and then we pass in the exponent as an argument. You know, it's the same case. Uh, if we had currency here, you know, the value would be the amount and then the parameter would be the currency. So this is how we express the value of the input that goes in the pipe as well as the additional parameters that we can pass in the pipe. And then of course it's the method implementation, but basically we have at pipe annotation, pipe transform interface, and then the transform method. So only three things are needed to actually build a pipe. Now it's worth mentioning the change detection mechanism for pipes and this again this piece is taken from the angular docs now uh, the change detection process for a pipe can be a little bit costly because uh, this change process runs after every dom event so each time you press your key each time you use your mouse you know on on timers so uh, you have to be a little bit careful about uh, what kind of logic you are doing in your pipe because um, the, 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 the transform method will be called quite frequently and if you call it for a very large number of inputs or if the transform itself is, is um, intensive in terms of computing power then you might have problems with performance but you no know, otherwise for most use cases uh, you will not see this but it's one thing that you need to take into consideration. Cool, now that we've uh, talked a little bit about the theory, let's try and build a custom pipe for ourselves. And before we, we start with the coding part, I want to remind you all to subscribe to this channel 
and stay up to date with more software development courses that will sharpen your programming skills. The pipe that we are going to build has something to do with note filtering. Now we have all the notes here, we have notes by category, and we also have a text box, a search text box here. And the idea would be that, you know, we type in something like hello, and then all the notes here get filtered and only the ones that contain hello in the title or in the text will be displayed. So it's like a, a free text search, okay, of our, of our notes to make it easy for the user to scan through these notes. And we are going to build a custom pipe to perform this, you know, filtering capability and to transform this input, which in our case is a collection of many nodes, to an output, which is a smaller collection of nodes that, you know, pass that text filter. So let's see how we can do that uh, in code. I'll open up the project. Okay, just close all the windows here just for, you know, clarity. And we are going to create a new pipe. And I'm going to put it here in the shared folder because usually pipes are shared pieces of functionality. So you don't use a pipe in only one component. Usually, you know, write them in a way that makes it easier for you to reuse them. So Angular schematic, I'm going to select pipe. You can also do this via the Angular CLI. And I'm going to call it note text filter. Okay, and now the Angular CLI will create two files, one for the actual pipe, so note text filter dot pipe dot ts, and the, what the other one for uh, is the spec is for unit testing the pipe's logic. Cool. So we have our pipe here, and if you remember from a couple of minutes ago, so we have the annotation at pipe. This is the name that we are going to use for our pipe. So when we want to implement it, we'll have to use this name. Then we have a standard class that implements the pipe transform interface. And then we have the transform method. And now we can actually start and modify it because we know our inputs, our parameters and our outputs. So the input for this will be a collection of nodes because you want to filter nodes. Okay. so. We have, actually I made a mistake here. So the parameter will be called notes. It's going to be of type not array, just to benefit from IntelliSense. So you, you can modify the types here without any issue. And then as an argument, I'm going to pass in, you know, the text by which we are going to perform the search. And this text is of type string. And the end result is also a collection of notes. Okay, so we have the signature of the transform method and now we can actually begin the implementation. And let's write something like this. So if the text is null or if the text is empty, then we will not perform any filtering and we'll just return all the notes. Okay. Else we will return notes and we'll apply a filter on them. So basically I want to see if the title includes the text that we search against or if the note text actually contains the search. Okay, so if our note contains the search text either in the title or in the text, then that note passes the filter and will get displayed to the user. And that's pretty much it for our basic filtering uh, in pipe. Cool. So we have our pipe here. Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning, this pipe is also added in the app module. So in the main module of your application in our case, here in the declarations section. So when you use the Angular CLI, you create the pipes and the pipes also get re gets registered in here because otherwise you will not be able to use it in your components. Okay, that's one side note that I wanted to make. Now that we have our pipe, let's go to our notes component and actually use it because, well, uh, that's why we've written it. So we'll go here, we'll go to the notes component, yes, and uh, we kind of need you know, 
each time the user writes something in here, you know, we have to store this variable, uh, this text in a variable, you know, in a, we have to create a two-way binding between this text and a variable in our component. And we'll create something in here called search text. So search text will be uh, a field of the notes component. And then we are going to use two-way data binding to link this search text um, field to the actual input. So we go to notes HTML and we'll scan for the search text. And here we have to add in this ng model. Okay, so we have ng model and ng model will be linked with search text. So now we have two-way data binding. Now in the beginning this wasn't here and now if you want to make the link now we make sure that this text is bound. Cool. So we have two-way data binding, we, we've captured the search text, we have our pipe and now let's see how we can use it against the list of nodes. So we scroll down, we go to the node list and here we see that uh, we have an ng4 and we iterate over each node and then we display the nodes. And this is the place where I want to apply my filter. So I want to display only the nodes that pass my search text criteria. So pipe operator and now we have to pass in the name of the pipe. In our case it's node text filter and you also have to pass in the search text as an argument. So we'll do like this and then we'll pass in the search text and the search text is the field that we've created earlier is this one okay so with these things in place let's see if our pipe actually works so I'll hit refresh and okay so I type in hello I get only the hello note I type quote I get the quote note Okay, so I say my, I get this because I have my in the text, so our filtering appears to work properly. So now we have successfully implemented a custom pipe. And as you can see, uh, it's really very, very easy to create these uh, pipes and then reuse them in our application. And the syntax is also very elegant. I mean, uh, just, you know, a couple of extra characters. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.